This is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live, and we're at the LD Micro 10th Annual Main Event in Bel Air, California. With me right now is Jeffrey Edel from Cinedime, publicly traded company with the symbol C-I-D-M. Jeffrey, welcome to SNN Live. Thank you. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. Great to have you on. So, for our audience, let's start off with an overview of the company and go from there. Sure. So, we are a domestic distribution company, basically that's migrated from used to being converting movie theaters from analog to digital. But today, we have 50,000 or so titles in our library that we distribute. We can take something into movie theaters, day and date release, all the way through the traditional physical means of Blu-ray and DVDs and so forth in places like Walmart. We have relationships with Apple, iTunes, Netflix, and all those digital players, uh, all the way through OTT channels that we've set up. Uh, we have four of them today, and so we can literally take any product domestically from cradle to grave in, in that manner. And we've just closed a large deal with Bison Capital on November 1st in China we'd like to talk about as well. For sure. So before I get to that, let, let's get a little history, because I know the company has had a couple different uh, iterations. So, you know, when did the company start and how did it develop to where it's currently at today? Well, we have, we're in New York and we're in L.A., and traditionally, the company was founded by a gentleman named Bud Mayo, but at that point, it was really a conversion to theater company, conversion company. And so we took 13,000 screens and converted them from analog to digital. But that's really the past. Uh, but we had to figure out a new way to move forward in terms of how do we leverage those theaters to create opportunities for us. So the company has sort of morphed into a company that now has, like I said, 50,000 titles sitting in a library. So we're outside the large uh, studios, if you will. We are the largest independent domestic distributor. And this has happened over time. The company is an amalgamation of a company called New Video, Gaim Vivendi Entertainment. And like I said, we have four over-the-top channels right now that you can get on any device, anywhere, anytime. And in terms of the titles, is there a sweet spot that Cinedime is in currently? You mean in terms of what titles we distribute? Uh, Cinedime pretty much does family-friendly titles, but we have the largest documentary library in the world. And so it really flips between anything family-related. We do a lot of action. Late, lately, we've done a lot of westerns, which is very interesting. Our film, Hickok, uh, performed triple what we thought it would do. So that's pretty much. And what differentiates your company from the competition that's out there? Well, it, we operate in a spot underneath the studios. So picture the studios go to these festivals, they buy all the big films, or they rather produce all the big films that go out there. And But people are sort of tired of seeing X-Men and Spider-Man, even though I love that stuff myself. And so we operate at the level below that. And we generally find films that are anywhere from a half a million dollars to maybe $15 million. And we help co-finance and help distribute those films. And our ability, when you come to us with your film or your library, I mean, Hallmark Channel, is we represent their library, the Shout Factory. We represent their library. We have, over time, Discovery, National Geographic, the NFL, uh, the NHL, Major League Baseball. We did the Patriot World Series. So we go across a swath of different titles and just pick up the rights, either to individual or catalog, uh, and release it across all platforms. So tell me a little bit about the deal that you also mentioned in the overview uh, in China. Can, can you get, uh, provide some commentary on that? Sure. So it's been very difficult, and I'm sure a lot of you know that uh, to make a deal and actually get it done in China, you've heard stories where China will say, people say, I have Chinese money. Well, we literally had a company called Bison Capital that tracked us for probably two years when our market cap was much higher. And then as the market cap sort of fell down and they saw that there was an opportunity, they came in. And Bison has companies like Boma Films. They have a sister company to us called Star Rise Pictures in, uh, in China as well. And the whole point is, is that the independent film world marketplace, the short film marketplace, is completely underserved. The people in China watch the Academy Awards, they watch the Emmys, and they cannot find these films outside of the big studio event films. So they're looking to us to try to create an opportunity to land grab, if you will, 
thousands and thousands of titles that they can do one of two things with. One, they could remake those films mm -hmm. in China, mm -hmm. which gives them an opportunity. Or two, we can just distribute them into China and have two billion or so people be able to see them. It really changes the whole complexity of Cinedyne from just a domestic company to a worldwide company. China being the fastest growing marketplace for entertainment and the U.S. being the current largest marketplace for entertainment. So, Jeffrey, in, in terms of the deal, you know, I had another follow-up question that I wanted to discuss uh, regarding your deal with China. And, you know, how is it traditionally done in terms of exchange of content between the U.S. and China? And, and how is what this new deal, how is it different than what was done previously? Well, mainly in the way the studio world works and the way content works into China is there's been a wall, really a great wall that exists there. And it's difficult because of the quota systems to get content in. The major studios have slots. They're known as slots. There's 34 slots that exist. 20 of them or so, as I believe, are for major studios and 14 are for the independents. In that regard, all the studios and content are clamoring from the United States to try to get some place there. And those slots can range cost-wise from seven to eight million dollars in terms of value. What's happened now is because we are 56% owned by the Chinese, we're working on being considered a China company, a Chinese company, which would could and would allow us to go on the side of that quota system and go direct into China with content and content flow from China to here. We'd certainly be under the censorship rules and so forth that they have there, but it will allow for a pure flow of content back and forth and which would make us probably the only U.S. China independent studio that does this. And what's your background? You know, how, how did you get into all this? Uh, my background is um, I've been CEO, president, chairman of a number of companies. Been very lucky throughout my career. I was the chairman of Intermix Media when we founded MySpace. Mm -hmm. So I was the first chairman of MySpace. That was back in the dark ages uh, before Facebook. I was the president of Deke Entertainment. Andy Hayward was running it as the CEO with me. And that was Inspector Gadget and Strawberry Shortcake and all that fun stuff. That was international, public company as well. And then I was the CEO of a company called Sound Deluxe Entertainment. We won five Academy Awards and 50 Emmys. And we were doing sound and music for large pictures like Braveheart, et cetera, at that point in time. So I really bring a combination of technical technology background, social media, as well as entertainment to the company. And you already alluded to this question I'm about to ask, but I figured we'd bring it all together here. What are some of the growth drivers for Cinedyne moving forward? Well, we believe, and again, we just closed the deal with Bison on November 1st. So the growth drivers are going to be literally going back into the library of distribution rights that we have. And literally last week, I pulled out 1,500 titles that now in China they want to either remake or distribute. So it's a matter of going back into the library, pulling down titles that existed before. But the biggest thing is, is we have a, an area called OTT, which is our over-the-top business. Mm -hmm. And this puts us out of the non-traditional distribution world. And the OTT means, like I said, over-the-top. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to get your content on devices like Roku, Xbox, through Verizon, uh, a relationship we have with Amazon. And really, that's the key, and that's another area that Bison really liked, because we have subscribers and advertising that we put on these channels. We leverage 50,000 titles that we have in our library to populate these channels, and then we can do very low-cost production or low-cost acquisition to populate these channels. And we have Con TV channel, the Docurama channel, the Dove channel, and now we have a Wham channel, which is their eSports network. And so it's really growing the ability to pick up third parties that want to get their channels on our networks. And we have the ability to pull, say, 20% distribution fee. And the risk of the creation of the content falls totally on the producer. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the area where we're going to see the biggest growth. And where can our audience go and find more information about Synodyme? You can go to our website, synodyme.com, and that's C-I-N-E-D-I-G-M.com. That's one way to get information, but it's not updated by the, for the new Bison deal, so we hope to get that done pretty shortly. Otherwise, come out and see us somewhere at a conference or wherever. Today's our coming out party. <laughs> My name is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live, and we're at the LD Micro 10th Annual Main Event in Bel Air, California. With me again is Jeffrey Edel from Cinedyme, publicly traded company with the symbol CIDM. 
Jeffrey, thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much. Appreciate being here.